we've got a kid's high chair tray here and it has a removable section to it too so if it's dirty you can just take the dirtiest part off and use the rest of the tray so it's good for two meals uh, let's get through how to model this and how to make sure that these parts can fit together well <clears throat> uh, this will be a lot of fun let's get started so first I'll uh, grab my top plane in fact I can show my view cube right click on the top of the view cube and just start sketching and I'll start by making an arc and I can put the origin right there we'll give this a large radius how about of 20 I'll grab a tangent arc and we'll move this upwards We'll go horizontal and make sure that this edge is horizontal with the arc center. We'll give this a distance from the origin of 9. Except we uh, looped to an unintended side, so we'll just move this a little bit closer and reapply 9. That's better. We'll give this a radius of 1. And then I'll make sure that my arc center is vertical with the origin. Then go vertical here, another tangent arc, and another tangent arc. We'll go with vertical there, vertical on the arc edge, just like that. We'll say equal, and we'll make sure that this arc has an equal radius to this. And I'll give this something like a radius of 14. And then I'll go arc center to arc center here and give a vertical dimension of 8. Uh, so we look like we're fully constrained. I'll select everything. We'll select mirror. And of course, we'll mirror across our vertical sketch axis or the Z axis. And we'll say OK. So I can deactivate that. We'll go with an extrude. And we'll give that an extrusion distance of 2 inches. And there we have a solid. OK, let's work on hollowing this out now. I want to remove this face. Uh, I can do it with uh, an extrude cut, right? And I would just start sketching on this face, import the whole edges of the face, uh, offset them, extrude cut down. But I can, I think I can save a lot of time by shell, using shell. So we'll say shell. I'll up this to 0.5. I'm going to do a variable thickness here. So, so I'll highlight this face there, and I'll give it. 0.0625 just like that and we'll say okay and you can tell we're very thin along the bottom here but we still have maintained our walls of uh, 0.5 so I I think it's pretty convincing that that was faster <laughs> at least I hope so let's add some more details here I'll highlight this top face we'll add in a construction circle We're going to go with, oh, let's give it a diameter of three. We'll project a sketch here with the reference figure, maintained association. No, let's not do that. So I'll add a tangent, and that will import this edge that I'm tangent to. And then I can use that to refer. Oh, right there. And we're going to say equal. And then I'll add an arc. You can make the arc cocentric and tangent. And it'll make the arc tangent, just like that. So I'll, I'll give this an equal curvature, right? This is to simulate the absolute maximum cup size that you think about putting in. And then let's give a dimension here. We'll make it horizontal, and I'll go with about three. Now we can. Uh, 
offset. So I'll open my offset tool and I'll be very careful to not offset anything I don't wish. I'll say okay to that. We'll make sure oops, we'll make sure that our lines here are horizontal. I'll add a cocentric, right, with this arc and this circle. Make sure that we are equal length if we're not already. We'll go with a tangent. The question is, what kind of offset do we want? Well, we said one half, so we'll just type in 0.5. And then we can close this off by adding vertical lines here and here. All right, we'll deactivate the sketch, extrude. We'll go to geometry right there and say, okay. And then from here, let's jump on this plane here and activate a sketch. We can go to the other side here. As you can tell, we're looking at it in this orientation. All right, from here, I can make a line and we'll grab a, a tangent arc and another line. And I would sure like to dimension this from the origin as, let's go with something like 0.9, make this 2, give this a radius of 2, we'll say 15 divided by 2 there, and then we want to constrain it that way, so we'll make sure that we are vertical, vertical and vertical. Uh, I can select everything. Let's mirror that across this axis. Deactivate and extrude cut. We'll say OK on that. All right, with that, uh, let's actually work on draft now. I want to make sure that this is, you know, moldable to some degree. So we'll go to draft and let's select our draft faces. Excellent. Let's we'll specify our neutral plane, which we'll make right here. We'll give this an angle of three. And as you can tell, it looks like everything drafted just right. Go to the top view, and yep, I can see this wall and this wall, so looks like we have drafted perfectly. So after we've drafted this, uh, we can start adding fillets. Let's start maybe here and here. And maybe I can make that 10 times larger. got those edges pretty well smoothed out. I'll say 0.5. A nice big fillet seems to work out pretty well. So apply that. Let's go a bit smaller now. Apply that and that, and that. So it looks like we have smooth edges where we want smooth edges. Now comes the fun part. We're all drafted. I think we're all smooth. We get to shell the part that we've already shelled. So we're doing a shell in a shell. So there's our shell. We want to remove this. We're going to say 0.0625. And then I'm also going to remove these walls here. So say OK to that. And there we have what's starting to really look like a high chair tray. And I put these high walls on there on purpose because if you've ever had kids, you're just 
going to want every measure possible to pick up things from the floor less. All right, let's work on making a removable tray. Of course, we want something that fits very nicely in all these faces. It helps that these faces are drafted to three degrees. So to model that, let's go to surfaces. I think surfaces can help us out here. And we're gonna create a surface from face. So I just highlighted all the faces on the inside. We're gonna maintain associativity. And now we've created a surface, which of course is no different than a plane or an axis, right? It's just an infinitely thin thing that references geometry. So we've got the surface, let's raise it. You raise me up. We'll go to move. And with our surface selected, we're going to use a precise move Let's choose a vertical axis. Let's go with a value of three. And we've raised our infinitely thin surface. Next. Let's thicken the surface and we'll select this. You can tell the arrows are pointed in the right direction so we know we're thickening the inside. If we were to thicken this outside, it wouldn't fit inside the tray anymore. So we're doing good. We'll say 0.0625. So it's the same thickness as the other one. And we were able to thicken this into a solid. From here, we can simply hide the surface. Hiding instead of deleting will increase your rebuild performance if that's something that you care about. Now you might argue, well, okay, but if I have this tray in, I can fit a smaller diameter drink. Maybe I, I don't want material right there so that I can fit the same size drink whether this tray is on or not. And so we certainly can cut it out. Um, we'll move down the history tree and I can go back to my surface from face. And I can simply deselect the surfaces uh, that I would wish not to import to maintain a consistently sized drink. We'll say okay to that, roll it back forward. And now our tray has a little cutout so that you can stick the same size drink right in your tray. <laughs> so, hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.